Bitcoin is close to becoming worthless. Now, what's the Bitcoin? The Bitcoin's like rat poison. Yeah. Oh. The greatest scam in history. Let's get it. Bitcoin will go to fucking zero. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, you ungovernable misfits. I'm your host, Max. Everybody knows that Bitcoin is useless, worthless, and doomed to fail. But what if everyone's wrong? What if it's the system that is doomed to fail? Join me as I speak to some of the brightest people in the space and slither to the deepest, darkest depths of the Bitcoin rabbit hole. Welcome back, everyone. Today, I have a very special show. I actually recorded this a few weeks ago. Bitcoin Q&A is my co-host and Rootsol is our guest. Rootsol was featured on 21ism Block 1 as our featured dev and he is obviously known for the Raspberry Blitz project. Anyone who's into Lightning, anyone who's into Bitcoin knows who he is. But it was really nice for me to get to know him a little bit more, dig into his past, how he found Bitcoin, and what keeps him motivated and working so tirelessly in this space. Before we dive in, I just want to say thanks again to Bitcoin Q&A for helping me out on this, and thank you to CoinFloor for supporting the show. Check out 21ism.com for more info on Rootsol, and enjoy the show. Root Soul, welcome to Bit by Bit. Thank you very much for coming on the show. It's an absolute pleasure to have you on. And for anyone who doesn't know your work or know you, can you do a little bit of an introduction for us, please? Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, hi there. Um, yeah, um, I, I stumbled into Bitcoin some years ago and then connected very quickly to the Berlin Room 77 kind of Bitcoin crowd. And it's kind of my home place. Like, So I'm from Germany, Berlin. And then got um, I started with a hackathon, um, like trying to, just to get into it. And then oh, it's, Bitcoin is cool for donations and sending small stuff. And 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 uh, but then even got a got a jump into the Dogecoin for for some time. There was a wild time there with the Doge Rain app. Maybe some people remember. But then I kind <laughs> uh, after this kind of detour or the detour, I, I I returned back and, and always kind of started to help organize Bitcoin events. Did that. In in Berlin and did this on the CCC Chaos Communication Congress uh, events here in, uh, in Germany. Um, been there uh, organizing the Bitcoin assembly. So um, I always like to bring people together. And then when this lightning thing started to happen, it really grabbed me again, like, oh, this small payments are possible again. This, this is exactly what I liked. And so I, I jumped in with Jeff from Fulmo and organized the lightning hack days and, and then even the lightning conference last year so um and from those hack days i got uh, i got involved into this uh, recipe blitz project so where it's about building your own full node and lightning node and learning about it and this kind of sprung up from those hack days kind of experiences so yeah i think that's my my kind of journey so at least in a short version I'm yet to get my hands on a Raspberry Blitz, but it looks great. I love that you can have the screen on it as well. Like it mm-hmm. looks really cool. Yeah, it, it looks like it's got some really nice features. And actually Bitcoin Q&A and I did a recording, I think it was about four episodes ago, which was really uh, digging into everything to do with nodes for beginners and mm-hmm. you know why to run one, why it's so important and the different options. And obviously Raspberry Blitz came up and... Um, he had some very good things to say about it. So Bitcoin Q and A, maybe you jump in and tell us your thoughts on it, and and have you run one or, or had had any experience with one yet? No, I haven't. Uh, I've not had a chance to uh, get to grips with the Blitz yet. I think the uh, like you said, Max, the screen is kind of one of the unique features that the Blitz has got, and uh, I'm looking forward to uh, gonna try and uh, get get one running pretty soon. Thing I like about the Blitz is it seems really uh, when there's an update, everything seems really battened down and everything seems battle tested. And uh, you know, there's uh, I think that's credit to the team really that the way that they implement all of the changes and the updates, of which there look to be many, many uh, 
various uh, facets to, to the Blitz, which I'm sure we'll probably get into. Yeah, I just I just like the, the way that the team conducts themselves and it, everything just seems really well thought out and really well packaged together. So, Thank you. <laughs> Good to hear. So. I really, really have to say because it's, um, it's, it's a work in progress and uh, it's a community project. So there comes a lot of ideas together and it's not that easy to integrate everything seamlessly. So um, I'm kind of delighted to hear that from the outside, it feels kind of solid. That's good. <laughs> because when you look at from the inside, you can sometimes see those little things starting waiting to, to get together. But you know, oh, maybe the next version, it will be a little bit more smooth. But yeah, but at least we try to keep those uh, those cats together, like herding cats a bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So how many of you are involved in this project? I know I had Open Oms recently on the podcast, and I know he's involved. And you know, is it a big community? I it, it it's it growed uh, or it grew over time. So um, I think yeah, the kind of steady um, contributors are part of the core team is uh, con to be considered like open arms and Frankie uh, and and then me so kind of with like this is kind of I think the the team that coordinates a little bit closer um, and then we have kind of um, people like uh, like to contribute uh, like just on special topics like uh, people that are developing on, on the other projects like the additional apps you can install that those people kind of jump in and, and maybe help on updates and or integrating new features so uh, and then of course the people that are trying it out and and using the the Raspberry Blitz project to to dig a little deeper and find some stuff that's not working, uh, also kind of start to contributing little stuff like of course it starts from a typo corrections, uh, but then also jumps in into oh this 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 feature was was uh, I have a better idea how to do this and contribute this one or I have a little feature I built and I just contributed. So over time, we kind of developed a little bit kind of what kind of contributions you can make. You can start small and we try, we try to want to help you. Um, then if you have an idea and you want to integrate it to grow it into more and more into the project, if you like, if you want to do that journey. And with uh, Raspberry Blitz, I've, like I said, I haven't used one. I currently have a MyNode, which uh, people sort of seem to say it's sort of the Swiss army knife of, of nodes mm -hmm. with uh, Raspberry Blitz. What, what's the sort of main differences? Like if I was to set one of these things up, what would I notice, uh, you know, to compare between the two features wise or? I think from, from the outside, from the hardware side, uh, you will see that the, the rest of Blitz is the one with the big screen on top. So um, this is a thing from the feature side or at least from the hardware side, the biggest difference people can see. And it and it helps you a bit in the beginning and setting up, like showing you the IP stuff and, and also giving you also a status update on the node. And that's very helpful, especially if, if you are new to this area and you want to take sometimes take a quick look so oh it's still running oh see i, I routed uh, one payment or i earned some one, one satoshi this day or something so there's a little there's a smaller kind of of things like the, the, the like the display from from the project setup it's like um there is no kind of um the, the my note comes with this premium business model behind it um so uh, and uh, of course it's also open source that's uh, all cool but the raspberry blitz kind of didn't have a business model in mind from the beginning so we get started like really from the from the hack days we wanted to have just a project collecting um, and make it easy for people to get a hands-on feeling for for running a node and and this is where the, the raspberry blitz kind of project developed from a tutorial kind of way to more and more into a project and it's more now like uh, so, so it's much much more open for people to to uh, like a community project so it's much much more open to contribute stuff or to do experimental stuff or add experimental stuff to it um so from that side i think as you can see that's uh, also from the contributor side you can see there is a lot of uh, people just uh, just using just this, this openness and the and on the other side, like of course, now we see that people have much interest in the project and like it very much. We try to stabilize it for the future a bit, so they're coming now a little bit the idea of not giving you a premium or whatever version. So this you will always have the the complete Raspberry Blitz experience, but maybe adding some services that you could use on top if you want to make your life a bit easier, like like the IP tutor service that we developed out of the hack days, that if, that we as full more as a distributor are offering for you uh, but of course you can change if you want to if somebody else set up the IP tutor service everybody else is free to 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 fork the project or uh, just to do 
at some other service too there it's more like a default if you stick by the default maybe we earn a little bit satoshis on the side hopefully in the future a bit more so that that uh, at least a kind of business model sees, seems to evolve there uh, to have a stable project for the futures too um, but if you try to keep it very open so everybody should be able to fork this project and build their own stuff on it so can I? Uh, can, can you talk us? Sorry, bit, bit on Q and A. You you go ahead. I was just yeah. I'm glad you brought up the uh, IP2 tour route. So could you kind of uh, something I'm quite interested in? Could you sort of break down what it's what it would allow uh, node runners to do and what what sort of doors it would open for them if they mm -hmm. run this uh, IP2 tour? Yeah, sure. Um, the it it came out a little bit our from the pain points people had of running a node because the basic stuff is you run it from home, right? So you, so you have it running behind your router, and um, there for basic lightning that's okay because uh, you can reach other nodes and connect to them, build channels with them. That's all not all fine, but the reachability if people want to have make a connection from the outside, a fresh connection from the outside, to your node. This gets a little bit more complicated. Normally, you can live with this situation, but then people want to connect, for example, their mobile wallets, um, that they have, their, their mobile phones to the nodes so they can kind of remote control their nodes from a Zap wallet or a Zeus wallet. So this was the first time where it got not that easy to reach a node because there is this firewall of, this, of your router, the nut, the nut uh, traversal stuff. And... Um, so the more techni savical people were able, of course, to open ports on their router and forward stuff to their, their nodes. But we were seeing more and more that this is getting hard for people to do, um, to, to manage their infrastru infrastructure on that kind of level, deep in that kind of level. And also some people were not able to do it because there are some provide internet providers out there that put you behind the provider nut. So the, there is no possibility to open a port or you use your Wi-Fi from your neighbors or from your community flat or something. Then you cannot open a port there. So um, then we, we, were, we were thinking what, what are solutions there. And uh, of course, there's Tor and some people also are able to use this very successfully because if you just use Tor, um, the Tor network, um, you get kind of a public Tor address, the hidden service address. And this one is reachable even if you're behind a nut. So, so from if you have some, some mobile app or some service, you, you can connect to this hidden service. But then you're on the Tor network. And this is also for everybody not that easy. So for example, if I want to provide something to the outside, maybe for my local community to have people in my neighborhood reach me simply with their smartphone or with their browser, they would have to install a Tor browser. I have to give them a long address. And this is kind of not feels not natural to the people outside and not to a lot of apps that are trying to connect to your node. And then so there was this pain point. How can we take the benefits of Tor being uh, very unknown and, and then have it easy to get outside your, your, your local infrastructure? And on the other side, providing people kind of classic clear net IP, like they're used to surfing the web and get then all the benefits of a clear net IP, like having HTTPS server, where you get this uh, transport, this uh, security and all this stuff. So the idea came up with um, how cool would it, would it be if there are some servers out there, a server out there, and a server has about 50, uh, 60,000 ports, like public ports on, on one IP you can give out, and you just rent out one port on, on, your, on your server. So if you have one server running, you can rent out 60,000 ports there to people that can make use of it. And so the IP Tutor is a service, open source um, service you can set up. And we built even a shop around it, or Frankie built a complete shop around it, so that you can really just very easily um, rent such a port on a public server out there and pay it with Lightning. And then your node gets reachable. Um, for everybody out there and you can get even a let's encrypt certificate and host a complete website that feels like it would maybe run on on a normal internet server but it runs from your home behind tor and uh, very unknown servers so this was the kind of goal we were heading for with the ip to tor so would i be right in saying that say i'll use max as an example if he wanted to sell some of his art online and he runs a, a local BTC pay instance, would this be a, a kind of fix for that, that he could sort of safely expose his instance of BTC pay uh, out to, the, out to the, the wider sort of, well, to the, to the internet? 
Yeah, this would be one of the kind of two classic services. Uh, for, as web service, we have at the moment the Ellen Bits and the BTC Pay server where you where you kind of run a website on your recipe blitz and it would make sense to offer it to people to the outside. And BTC Pay server would be one example uh, that you can set behind the IP2 Tor and uh, then you integrate it. Uh, then you have really a BTC Pay instance running but of course, you connect it or integrate it to some other store or somewhere. So maybe the being a non is not that 100% in this scenario. So you would maybe also need to completely host your website where you're selling stuff on your recipe blitz. I don't know, do, do have, have a complete home server <laughs> setup was maybe not the goal of the project, but really running such critical instances like BTC Pay or an Ellen Bits uh, kind of uh, is, is, is something where you can deliver a web ser service to the outside, to your local community. Was this what you were talking to me about uh, the other day, Bitcoin Q&A? You were saying about if I was to use BTC Pay, that I would actually be exposing my IP address and that maybe that's not such a good idea. Is this what you're saying? This is basically potentially a fix for that? Yeah, that's certainly what it sounds like to me anyway. Yeah, the way yeah, we all uh, explained it. Yeah. Okay, very cool then I will have to be setting one of these up. <laughs> yeah, sure. Let us know because um, I'm a little bit more focused on the Ellen Bits part too at the moment, but uh, getting experience from people running BTC Pay server behind the service would be great just to have some practical feedback on that. Because this service is very early, uh, we did we kind of hacked together a prototype that we're just now testing. So uh, this is something don't expect uh, kind of uh, a ready product, but it's really, really early. But we have it out there for everybody to try it out and, and, and let us know if this is working for them. Yeah, I'll definitely give that a go. Yeah, and hopefully you can give some feedback because if there's anybody who can come across problems when doing anything technical, anyone who can give you feedback on what can go wrong, that's me. I will find <laughs> I, I will find a way to fuck it up and cause problems and report back. Don't you worry about that. Yeah, no, no, no pain, no gain. This is okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. And what made you come into this space in the first place, like with Lightning, obviously you said you, you were involved for some time and looked at Doge and some other different things, but what was it about Lightning that really excited you and why have you gone down this route? Um, it, it was really just, 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 just to see that we can really send Satoshis again. So um, there was the thing that, that where Lightning got more, of, of course I heard about Lightning, there was the idea around, but then about two, this December 2000. 17 we had the chaos communication congress and there we we were kind of assembled and we're talking about bitcoin and we were saying oh the fees are getting so high yeah, so, so this is you will not pay maybe pay not paying the coffee but but make your small payments there we were we're seeing glitching this idea away of of, of cheap payments uh, on, on 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 the network so and there was like and then somebody brought a prototype i think nikla was it like the first prototype on sea lightning uh still on testnet but you had this one button and you just press the button and you would were, were donating one satoshi over testnet uh to to another lightning wallet and and uh, more like for donations so we had a kind of contest how often people were pressing the button i don't have the final number uh, in my mind again but it was some satoshis there so and this was like okay this could work so this is nice we, we need something where we need just the small payments if you want to have the the money for the internet like we, we we need to be able to even pay pay this website some satoshis to make this advertising go away and all this those situations and um yeah and this was like where where we had this feeling at the assembly like i think let's try this lightning thing out let's see how where we can kick this and then this was like and, and then i think some weeks later kind of jeff asked me like what do you think like do we want to go a little bit more into this full mode direction and, and do this and then i said yeah i would love this and that's where i kind of started we we're onboarding i was also learning from the beginning and i was learn learning with the people like we we did our first hack day and just invited people that were interested and, and to see where this is going and we then we were seeing like after the first event yes yes this is good this this is what what we want to do and we mm. did more of it <laughs> and has it sort of exceeded your expectations or is it along the lines of what you were expecting you'd achieve or sort of where are we um if you take what your vision was on that day and you were thinking wow this could be the future where are we along that line uh, at least at least a good way ahead because a lot of 
questions you very early on you, you had like oh it would be oh there was a lot of routes there have multiple routes can I use multiple routes at the same time so there was a lot of this early questions there but uh, and 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 I think a lot of from this basic questions we were kind of uh, solved and we have kind of solutions there like also watchtowers now so so the basic stuff is there um, but of course like when you dive when you really try to do, make it practical you can now really see okay there is still this liquidity thing that's not that easy for people to explain on the first thing like we we see it like soft because yeah, i just install breeze or you just install phoenix wallet but in the end it's still for people a, a, a topic there and it's, it's still there and then to, when they come from the classic bitcoin on-chain idea it's like something to to grasp still um so i'm, I'm very I'm, I'm on the one side i really love to to see all this growth and what 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 already has happened and and really to have those all those nodes and, and node projects you can this is really the, the vision I, I i really had in mind and I, I love to see now that people take it it's so important to run their own infrastructure and we have something against those uh, big servers and, and cloud services that are out there so that we that this, this seems possible and this part of the vision i i'm, I'm very optimized on the other thing is still like um th that people don't people using bitcoin as uh, for payments is still still maybe also a cultural thing not, not exactly sure i think the technology is almost there like we're very close to to give good good even a good um, technical infrastructure and a technical even from the usability i think it gets better every day it's we are already on a quite good uh, if you just look from the consumer kind of perspective we're already on a quite good level there it's more like that people really that want to pay with Bitcoin is still we can see maybe we have even the technology is a little bit more early than what what people really have have the pain point for so I think it was come at one point but I don't think we, we are culturally there that people already use Bitcoin as a normal way of payment so it's more the hodl kind of uh, investment and speculation is still for a lot of people the the, the main stuff so you kind of see that as a barrier for people really using this stuff. Yeah, it's it's more like an interest thing. It's that your your pain point needs to be big enough, right? So you you're um in, I'm in Germany here and credit cards work well. Yes. It's, it's, mm -hmm. it's, 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 uh, now we have also this tap and pay stuff and then so so this is uh, it's working for most of the people so um they, they they there's not the pain points yet so um the 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 inflation stuff is still in the people get asking about this or oh, wow, so much money gets printed this is why they get interested in 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 seeing bitcoin as a hedge or as a maybe a speculative um, hedge maybe for 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 that kind of for their savings but still like why should i pay with bitcoin like even then you have if you really take it seriously you have then all those uh, tax stuff you have to keep in mind like did i really hold this bitcoin or this satoshi for one year and on and how much did i made made gain or loss on, on a sell and all the stuff if you take this seriously um to the penny it, it, it gets complicated in your mind and i think this is still what people i think if, if you really want to do stuff on the internet like for me personally, I like to pay my VPN uh, stuff for this, all, all security related stuff. I um, definitely go Lightning uh, and, and Bitcoin. Um, but but on, on the classic outside situations, it's still, I think, not, it doesn't feel natural yet for people. But still, there is the pain point situation. And Germany is a very privileged country when it comes to at least even to st financial stability. So um, I think in other areas of the world, there is uh, there's different pain points. And then we can maybe even see there more maybe maybe even more early adoption for for everyday payment with bitcoin yeah yeah for sure i think certainly for me anyway like i'm not massively technical i try my best but um i always have that fear in the back of my head especially with lightning i'm, I'm definitely less sure on lightning than i am with on-chain payments and i always do worry like if there was a way where i felt confident sending payments between other peers and people that i know I probably would do it more, but I always have that fear in my head of like, mm, you know, down the line, can this be tracked? How how mm. good is this? How how is it going to protect my privacy? And even if I am to run something, you know, uh, through Samurai and then take it onto Lightning, then really, am I giving any information away that I shouldn't? And I think certainly for me, that's the biggest issue. And I would use it a lot more if it wasn't for that. Do you see the possibility for 
privacy improvements on the Lightning Network and, and ones that are going to be accessible for you know more or more normal or less technical people down the line. I uh, I definitely hope so. Um, the um, I'm, I'm also but but I'm also seeing the other side like like people make people making Lightning easier for people by by reducing their kind of privacy like uh, so, so there is always I think we will first I think first we will see see more of the tendency that that you have a lot of services out there like uh, the, or even the custodial services uh, that banks maybe will offer soon um so so we will see a lot of that in that direction I think this will be stuff you we will see more than at one point more and more um and and this is maybe on the privacy side not uh, net positive this is more on the other side um but i think it, it will spark a counter um a counter movement even and so that 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 there will be people that don't like this thing and they will put even more effort into building solutions and and then catching make it easier for those people see what a, what exactly do they need? How, what, what, how can it work? And you really learn again from them and offer and, and offer solutions there. So if, if we really want to replace Visa and MasterCard, I think we will, will also get into get a lot of to those people that also don't care. They just want something that works. And maybe if it can work cheaper with Lightning, they, they will choose Lightning or the merchants will choose Lightning because they don't have just chargeback fees or something. So there might be just economical reasons to do it and not the privacy reasons. And I can see that at least personally, I think Lightning adds a lot of privacy to it because you don't have this this on chain tracks that you leave. But of course, if you just go into some big, if you just download a, a big mobile wallet, it gives you everything from the start and just have this one big big note there, and and uh, then just with not much notes in between connects you to your goal. Sure, you leave your tracks somehow. So if you really, for the, but for those people that really care, we have those node projects. We have all those infrastructure you can run by yourself, or you know a friend that runs it. I think this this nodes and fam, node for friends and family, and 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 uh, this is all there, and they will not be able to take this away from us. So it, it is there when we need it, and again, it's it's a pain point situation often that people really take care about this. You raised a good point there. It's all about the whole privacy aspect of thing. And if you met somebody today that was sort of starting out in, in Bitcoin and they, they were, you know, of a fairly good base level of technical ability, what sort of main things would you say to them to, you know, recommendations in terms of maintaining their privacy when they're interacting with Bitcoin and Lightning? KYC, look out where, where where did you kind of connect it? First of all, on the on where did you get your Bitcoin? So it's it's like always a little bit of hygiene, right? So so you have to take to take or oh, where do I got them from? Is the, did I offer there some KYC stuff or whatever? And even on the spending side, like if you spend and uh, and, and order something, it will give you address. So yeah, these coins are also uh, maybe tainted so in any kind of way. So um, yeah, it, it's always good at least. At least the advice would be like have a wallet to play with you where you can just kind of do normal stuff to just try stuff out and um, do, don't do risky stuff and on the other side maybe have a second wallet that you try to keep clean from the beginning and this is the wallet where you always think twice uh, because if you just have one wallet and you try to be the the the, the hundred percent privacy person you maybe just either either you make it wrong or on the other side you you don't you don't have the guts to do anything because you're always kind of uh, if I do it is right. So, I think you you should have kind of these two two kind of wallets things like one really to to do have just small things play with just get a feeling in general, and then the other things where you really always think twice uh, like in this in this both directions and maybe then try to learn a little bit about coin mixing. Even if I have to admit I'm personally not the the, the biggest user of this myself. So um, this is, but but this is definitely stuff to to look into if you if you want to care about the second wallet a little bit more um, carefully. I think uh, yeah, the the two wallet thing is uh, that's great advice. Uh, just picking up on something you said there around that you're you're not a great user of CoinJoin implementations. Why is that? You, is that is that because there's a a barrier there for you, or is it just not something that you're interested in? <laughs> and so it's a little bit like. Um, it's it's a time thing. <laughs> I we really have to say, and then uh, because all the development stuff on the Raspberry Pi, so all, all of my free time also, then I try to put into the, into this development and fixing issues, developing stuff. 
it, it, it eats your time to really take time for other stuff. So um, I'm, 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 I have really have to say after the, even the join market integration is on the on the recipe blitz. Uh, I, I never had time to really play through. <laughs> so it's, it's on my list. It's like on my, my to do list or my playlist. But but it's, it's, it's more like every time when I think about like, do do it that time or do it that direction, I, I'm almost kind of go for the productive thing on the on, 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 on the project. So it's not the best kind of uh, uh, solution because sometimes I have to really have to wait and, and then I hear about open arms and he, what what's his kind of uh, um, wisdom there. So, um, but but really the the best thing is the hands on on, on experience. And uh, if you're a developer, I think you 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 cut a lot of of your playtime for productive time. Yeah, it's kind of a bit of a, a a bittersweet situation for you there, really, isn't it? In terms of pushing the project forward uh, and then not having time to play with it yourself. Um, if uh, if you could uh, wave a magic wand and sort of uh, add in any any feature that you wanted, uh, regardless of how difficult it would be onto onto the blitz, what what would that be? Mm, if I really just have a magic wand, I may pew. Um, I think the the yes, the web UI is definitely something we we had in mind uh, for a long time, and uh, so so. But maybe it's good that we waited a bit. Um, so because now we can see like like the Umbrella project really delivering there, uh, a lot of people loving it. So this is definitely maybe something, sometimes it's good not to, to start too early on stuff. Um, so maybe the, the idea is really to give it a good web UI and maybe to just uh, put the, the Umbrella UI on there. Uh, but it's something I have to maybe to, to check out, to contact the people from the Umbrella project and see how comfortable they would be uh, if we just take this open source part and, and, and put it on top of the Blitz. Not sure if there were any hard feelings or something. It's open source. Basically, it should be in the area. But yeah, every I know it's like uh, it's projects. Maybe there's you have to see if, if, if somebody has a good contact to the Umbrella people, uh, feel feel free to to make an introduction con uh, there and uh, to see maybe how we can work together even on, on, on that at one point. They're actually on my list of people I want to speak to. So once I manage to get in contact, I will put the two of you together. Oh yeah, or, or maybe just ask how they would feel if other node projects would kind of uh, just make use of the. And then, of course, it would be nice at one point, even you know, to, of course, to contribute back. But, but I think in the beginning, it would more be more an adoption in one one direction. Yeah, it would be interesting mm. to know. So if if you know, or if you hear of, if if the Umbrella people here, uh, feel free to comment. It would be interesting to know. <laughs> and any other features that you'd be looking for? on the project or anything that you've got up your sleeve? Um, the kind of next, so uh, at the moment we have the 1.6 out and we are uh, working or, uh, on a 1.61, what's more like a uh, service release, mostly working on the on on same basic setup, but fixing some script stuff and, and also some uh, hopefully on the Ellen Bits side, uh, hope to get fixed this week. Uh, so that we can make this uh, Raspberry Blitz for community uh, projects, like uh, having this lightning vouchers maybe in the first version or having this merchant onboarding with the cash in the back concepts. Those are two things I hope we will get into the really early next uh, service release. And then the then after this is the 1.7. This will be more a background re refactor uh, version, a lot of stuff in there. It's like putting it uh, by Tor by default in there. Um, and, and then the whole installation process should be a little bit more kind of streamlined so uh, that maybe later on we can put a web UI on it. Uh, so like preparing for this kind of step. So maybe then 1.8 will go a little bit into this web UI direction. And the goal is a little bit like for the 2.0 maybe to really have then this uh, from a from a SSH kind of thing uh, in, into really to something where you have then a hybrid that that's on that that, that you could use it for even from a more consumer perspective, uh, but if you want to then go deeper, you can find all this community SSHing in and uh, really get crazy there. So this would be. I think the magic one thing, if we really can do a lot of stuff done with a magic one, that would be great really to have those, those both areas that you have a node that really feels like a consumer product if you install it, but then you can really go with one like, oh, you can SSH in like, okay, cool. And then bam, I have all this crazy scripts and uh, stuff that people experiment on that they didn't see 
kind that was all hidden a little bit like behind this consumer kind of looking product but then you have it all at your disposal this this, this would be kind of thing the 2.0 version uh, that i would wish for but it's everything we have to see and um, everybody has to be happy in the team with where we're going but just from my perspective magic wand idea yeah just maybe hmm. and it's interesting hearing uh, i love speaking to devs and people who are actually building this stuff because i have all these grand ideas in my head of uh, how things can work, but I'm not the one building it and have no bloody idea what I'm doing. So uh, it's interesting to know how far away you feel we are from that type of consumer product where I could say to any normal person who's not into Bitcoin, here you are, here's this thing you can buy, Mm. you can set it up. Like, do you have an idea in your head of a timeline where that would be possible? I, I think there's, uh, don't, don't get me wrong, it's more like this is for the Raspberry Blitz. Um, what Raspberry Blitz came or comes from this community, like more uh, hacky kind of setup. Where we, where, so that that's okay for the Raspberry Blitz. This is a little bit down the road, maybe, and maybe timeline, maybe we talk mid 2000. 21 or whatever so don't i'm not good at with timeline so but uh th- those projects are already out there that you're asking for like this this is exactly the uh, like projects i have the feeling at least projects like the umbrella or the my note come more from those consumer perspective first kind of uh, ideas uh, and i think they're also very open for community distribution but they come more like from this uh design first uh, user experience reduce it to the minimum kind of a little bit um thing and so I think we have those kind of notes almost out there. Like I think the my note is already kind of, if somebody's asking like what to set up, I would say, okay, if you're really coming from the consumer kind of side, check out the, the, the my note project. Or if you're more like in a merchant situation, maybe the noddle. Um, and if you really, and, and maybe in some months we will have the, the umbrella also have a good, uh, more like this, this replacing what, what the Casa wanted to be. So I think there's already, from that perspective, we have already something out there or something in store. For the recipe blitz, it maybe take a bit more longer to to finish that kind of road, but coming more from from another perspective. And obviously, your developer, you're working on this stuff, and uh, you're spending your time making all this stuff more accessible. But there must be a reason that you're so heavily involved in Bitcoin. There must, there seems there usually is uh, more to it than just I find this technology interesting. What is it about? Bitcoin that has really grabbed your attention? Is there one thing that, or uh, or a few things that really grabbed your attention and made you stay in this space? For sure. So the question, how long to explain, um, the, the, there was a bigger journey after I always was interested in, in kind of also political change or like how, how we can can overcome the system a little bit where we're in. And then also after my study finished, I was kind of on this journey and asking me, okay, the rest of my life will be about this money so what is this money <laughs> so 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 um so so and then when and then was this crisis of 2008 and then it was like what the hell <laughs> it's like what is, this is all wrong <laughs> and then uh yeah and, and then seeing money so no so so basic in our society like it was something at least i was sensitive about about the topic and when i was seeing bitcoin like a solution coming from my kind of world like programming kind of world this this was fascinating and and especially because of all the solutions we were talking about in the past it always were so easy to corrupt so even if you got people in the beginning maybe the next generation will fuck it up so um the this is always a problem with, with people out there uh, so so um and then and then we have this this really this this idea of of really having this in the code and of sure there is also a bigger process behind this developer and, and miners and there's a bigger structure also there and there's also people involved but but it's it's, it's really a big and the best the best kind of hope or a glimpse or, or or what that we have at least what i can see to change this this very powerful system to have something that maybe can take to stand a chance against this um I'm, I'm very convinced that that this is our best shot not co- there's maybe this little percentage there where i'm still asking is it really uncorruptible <laughs> but this is more like my uh, when I had some drinks and uh, then then maybe you can say, where is this little ping pong? <laughs> <laughs> You've got to think about it, you know, when you're spending all your time and if you're heavily invested and you're living on this stuff, then it's always going to creep into your mind. And that's a good thing. I think anyone who sits back and doesn't sort of think critically about it 
maybe they should be. But if you sort of, if you put on that adversarial hat and you're mm-hmm. trying to think of like, you know, how, how can this be corrupted? Like, what can people do? What worries you the most? Lately, we can see a lot of Wall Street money is, is coming in. So I think, I'm not sure, long, I think there was always a little bit of it. So because people like to put their fingers in early to, to just see what's happening. And I think a lot of people also, even on I think on Wall Street, you find people that in the end know the complete system is fucked. So so they 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 love to 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 yeah. to have something on the side and play with it, like they let out the anarchists. So um, so, so there's I don't know. It's like but for when now the mainstream comes in, like um, and then like mainstream Wall Street, like they're used to take control. So of what they kind of uh, if they even even think of the internet. So in the beginning, it was invented by hippies, and and uh, and, and it was 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 this crazy everybody's one voice whatever idea, and and then big big money came in and and, and changed this complete system like. And then we we have now what we have like with Facebook and Google and, and all the Amazons and stuff. So um, so the thing we the, the, there's always this naive. Thing that we like in the beginning and maybe we we even overrate ourselves sometimes so it's always the question what is it and um i'm not exactly sure but there will be at least a try at one point to influence the development or maybe doing their own fork or trying to for example what what will happen in the uh, in in our note with our notes so the economical valuable notes count in the end so the notes that are making the all the transactions coming through like the lightning the big lightning notes where where stuff is happening the uh, the bitcoin notes that are very active and and and, and, and where, where stuff is happening like where, where people standing behind like um for example the the note that coinbase is running is much more kind of powerful economically than the node I'm, I'm running here from my home so um there's this uh, and and those things i think when 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 they decide then to do something or fork something off or change something there is this battle will be hard it will still be hard so because then we really have to convince the the all the other smaller nodes to to stick to our side and i think it's we have a good chance there because they because they cannot risk too much split of the network so they if they can really they really have an 80 percent they need some 80 percent 90 percent consensus to don't fuck up the system too much that it will disturb their business um but but uh, maybe they would try and the question is how will it look like then i think that's uh, probably along the lines that i would go as well and one of the things I worry about is like rehypothecation and people, like you're saying, with Coinbase and these people, do they actually hold the funds? How many people have claim to the Bitcoin they think they own? And it's one of the reasons that I push as hard as I do for privacy and making sure that people hold their own keys. And Bitcoin Q&A has been helping me a lot mm-hmm. with uh, the coin join side of things and all of that, because these are the tools I see that we can fight against this. And, and I think it is inevitable. I think you're absolutely right that that, you know, there's never been a time that they don't want to get involved in something. And at the end of the day, this is something that sort of it would affect them in in a way that they're not used to. You know, they've never seen any competition and, and now they can see it, or at least some of them are starting to see it. And like you're saying, the system is fucked. There's, there's no way to argue that. And this is now this competing system that they're not sure how to control and they want to. So we need to be on our guard. And I think it's the good thing is there. Normally, they're not, they they don't speak with one voice. So it's, it's normally they are also kind of split and they hate each other. <laughs> and so, so we also <laughs> count, can count a bit on that. So it's really hard to, to that they will produce uh, that they will produce a consensus that's so hard against everybody else, and can have the chance to to succeed. There really needs to be something that 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 really com- unites them so so hard that there's something in Bitcoin they cannot swallow, um, and hopefully I think because when it comes from a sound money perspective, I think that resonates with a lot of kind of people that come from the startup mentality or from the from the more economical world. So I hope they they maybe they 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 more welcome it in the end than than just try to fight it. So we have to see. We will see. It, it does feel, though, uh, like you said, like it's creeping in. Uh, it seems like every couple of days I'm hearing about someone changing across and changing their views on Bitcoin and that it's getting more and more 
more and more normalized in current financial models and and people are starting to open up to it so it's only a matter of time i'm not sure the best way to fight this other than you know people holding their own keys and and caring about their privacy but it's a really hard thing to get people to care about it's something that i think like you're talking about the internet it started off as something that was meant to be free and that everyone could connect and there was no sort of man in the middle sucking up all the value and now we do have google and facebook and amazon and it certainly doesn't feel to me like it has ended up like it was supposed to do you feel there's any hope for the internet now or is it something where we have to start something completely new down the line well, I think the internet is still great. So we, we have still this wires that connects us and we have encryption so we can use those wires for whatever we want. Like we, we, we can make those communication. We have this every time, even in, in a country where I am very, even quite good broad, broadband compared to some other parts of the world. So um, I think this is great. The infrastructure at least is there. So the the um, we just have to make sure that we keep those tools and um, not give, being taken away from us. So so a lot of comes and in the end, it, it, the internet is what we what what the people out there wanted in the end. Like they didn't want to do take care about their router was then it have a home server and and have all this in the beginning they were happy just have a browser and just have a client there and so it's also the what the consumer wants so it's 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 also the machine that produced to 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 that consumer to to a certain degree if the computer had demanded from the beginning something else uh, maybe we would have something else so i don't think it's lost i think we just in a in a phase where we at least have to reconsider some stuff we did in the past so and i think this is and a lot of people are aware of it at least in my bubble uh, even my my more not uh, bitcoin friends uh, data privacy definitely they they know so like people are getting more and more aware of it so this is starting and we maybe see now with start bitcoin maybe it started with uh, even as as much as the whole blockchain is uh, often or too much overhyped there i think we very interested to see what will happen with projects like Filecoin. So if they, if they can really decentralize the, the, the cloud data centers, that would be great. So, um, just, so I'm just curious, to, and then at least that the that Bitcoin has inspired all those moves to decentralization, even if a lot of stuff has failed or were scams. I think this is basically a good thing. Um, we hopefully it's something good, even some beside Bitcoin, something else will still be will come up and will be there. So I'm very happy to see those progress, such progress. Something I was going to uh, jump in, uh, Rutal, and ask was um, I'm keen to, uh, this is probably a bit of a question for my own benefit, really, is that I'm coming to visit Berlin in a couple of months. I'm keen to know what the uh, Bitcoin scene's like down there. Could you tell us a bit about that and perhaps a bit about the lightning hack days that you hold? Mm hmm the um yeah basically the uh, the room 77 would be the first thing to say about uh, berlin and bitcoin this is the one bar the one of the bar that where you could buy beer for bitcoin like brick and mortar kind of first off so the but but at the moment it's closed because of all the corona covid situation so the so I'm not sure if this the, the bar will most probably not be open in the next kind of weeks so um from everything else it's I mean, all those kind of public places are a bit kind of closed now it's uh we have the we try to do in october uh, a smaller kind of recipe blitz kind of hack day that's it's a smaller event, but if you're mid mid October in in the Berlin area, let let me know, and then maybe to the end of the year, because there's normally the CCC Congress, that's which is normally a, where thousands of people come together, uh, and and then but but this time it will be more in a decentralized way, but there will be stuff happening in Berlin between uh, Christmas and, and New Year's Eve, so there will be locations where stuff will happening, so we will try to have one place where we will we'll meet as, as the kind of the bitcoiners so um so if you're in berlin around uh um, between christmas and, and new year's uh, also try to to check out or maybe drop me a note so there will be also something possible the other stuff is more online events so uh we have this berlin socratic seminar that's kind of regularly but at the moment also it's it's a, an online event so um and there we and, and, and there will be some event at least on the first thursday 
uh, a month, which is the classic date for the Bitcoin meetup. But you have to check on meetup.com uh, where this is happening because this is moving around and uh, because because of the location problem. I will. Uh, I'll keep my uh, ears to the ground for that one. Just on the yeah, uh, cool. the, the lightning hack dates, has, has there been any? Uh... Like talking about previous ones now, has there been any real uh, gems or real uh, usable pieces of software or hardware or anything like that that's sort of come out of, has been a, a product of one of those meetups? Ah, uh, that's, that's, that's a good question. I don't have made a, quite a list, but there was at least uh, projects, I think watch, the Watchtowers projects. Not sure if they were really started on the hack day, but at least people, for example, were participating and then finishing their the thing very early on, we also have those um, the the hardware tinkering stuff, like the the M5 stack stuff. The Lightning ATMs were very early on, like at least maybe I'm not exactly sure if the projects really started at the hack days, but definitely kind of the hack days were part of the development uh, journey there. So all these little hardware projects, like the Lightning ATMs, the the the, the point of sale stuff. Even some, some uh, I think there was a, a bubblegum machine very early on that didn't develop into a big project, but uh, but it was like a hacking project. There was this beer tap, the lightning beer tap that we, we had on the hack days. Um, I think uh, even the more experimental stuff. So you, we were seeing a lot of prototyping things like this this, this ATM that can work even offline uh, and, and stuff. So so a lot of the, uh, even the hardware wallet side, the Stefan Signalev was showing a lot of the, uh, of, of the Spectre do-it-yourself wallets. So the, I think there's, and, and of course, the even the, even the bigger implementations were trying to uh, always update us on, on under the, the lightning implementations we're trying to update us on, on the latest kind of the stuff they're working on so i don't have a complete list i have to say but i can see that at least a lot of stuff was influenced uh, during those kind of hack days and yeah for sure i think um like you touched on earlier i think uh, the damn coronavirus is uh, sucking the fun out of everything it's always kind of easier to sort of work mm. on these and iterate on these these kind of things when you're in person you can sort of bounce ideas off one another so Hopefully they can uh, they can kick off again soon. One more, and then I'll let uh, I'll let Max jump in again. And I was uh, thinking, I presume you 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 guys are in in uh, you must have like a Telegram support group. What would you say one of the common pitfalls that new people come into into the Raspberry Blitz community tend to make, or a couple of them? And what sort of things would you sort of recommend that people avoid? Hmm. The the classic thing is like because the Raspberry Blitz project invites people to build with their own hardware. Like uh, you get the single parts from Amazon. Here's the shopping list. So this is really the, the kind of this do-it-yourself starter feeling. And a really, a lot of people use stuff they have lying around, and and that's good on one side to reuse stuff. I'm totally a fan of that, but. On the other side, so if you just choose a, um, then, for example, a power supply that's not powerful enough, and because power constraints are quite quite hard on the on the Raspberry Blitz, because you power a complete hard drive together with a with, with the Raspberry Pi that's doing some heavy computation, so this is a classic pitfall that people um, just choose a choose choose just one of the power supplies they have lying around. Um, I'm very careful with this. Really check if this is really good, stable one, giving you three um, ampere uh, kind of really of power. So and, and even maybe a little bit more. So the one on the shopping list is very recommended. At least we 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 were seeing no no big problems at the moment there. And the and also the this this goes then for hard drives. So even if this is an old hard drive that you have, uh, maybe it's not the best place to store your uh, Lightning funds. So so also be and even choose uh, on the SSDs. There, so there could be a bigger SSDs that have bigger power demand. So also, also so one advice would be try to stick as close to the uh, to the shopping list we have because this this hardware combination is something at least we were trying to provide something that works well together. Um, that's kind of the first thing. Um, and then, of course, uh, the whole backup situation. So um, think of a, you have to think about um, what is if you have power outage and, and your, your device just gets off and then your data is corrupted. Can you recover from such an event? So um, this is a little bit the, the, the idea. So if you, if you just have money there to play in the beginning, 
that's maybe not you don't maybe have to be 100 percent on that area but but very closely look into the static channel backup stuff see where you can store this maybe even outside of your device at the, at the moment we we offer a, a dropbox storage that's maybe not perfect but at least as a practical solution hope to be we provide something better in the future maybe not a dropboxing but it's kind of safe it's encrypted this file so important thing that you have the static chat up uh, static channel backup file uh in, in in some place other maybe even than the um than, than the blitz itself um so for just for backup if somebody comes into your room and steals this complete box so that you have maybe some chance still to to uh, get your funds back before the other person is figuring it out how to get it out of this box um, but this is more an edge case. It's more normally it's uh, don't get too afraid to that people other people will steal from you. Normally you you will the problem is more that you will lose them or, or you will something in this direction. So that's more the the attack you should first fight against <laughs> and not make it for you too complicated on recovering. Sometimes if you want to for to be too secure, this can also at least when you're a beginner. To stick to the defaults a bit and and don't try to already already from the beginning put maybe the extra options in um, maybe reserve this maybe for your second setup where you then uh, if, if you want to then plan to run really a bigger node or something start in the beginning again start with something to play keep keep the funds low um, until you feel kind of a certain go to through the ups, uh, update process once and if you feel comfortable then with all those situations then maybe take a weekend and then start fresh and, and then really uh, maybe go for a little bit more like i said to you before it's something i want to set up myself i'm just wondering parts wise you're saying obviously go through the list and and, and order from there to get uh, to get the best mm. quality set up you can do you have an idea on cost including the screen and all the bits that you need um is it much different to my my node setup which was i think 300 pounds ish with the ssd and and the raspi 4 i think i did and and all the other bits um i don't know the pound situation euros about the same now <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes, this could be, this could be already one to one. Um, the, the normally the yeah normally what what from the hardware it's very similar to to the other node projects. Uh, so we I think almost everybody now goes with a one terabyte mm -hmm. SSD. Um, Raspberry Pi four is standard, and normally the I think the four gigabyte is kind of the even on the cheapest kind of level already um so so i think this this is where you kind of equal to to the other projects the, the, the lcd screen is not the big difference it's kind of 20 euros or so um this this doesn't add too much and you can even run the recipe bits without the lcd if you really want um but i always would recommend to put in the extra 20. it looks so cool screen. yeah for 20 for 20 euros come it on <laughs> It makes me. It would make me feel like a cypherpunk, but with no skills. Like I'd come into my office and see that and be like, "Oh, look at it!" <laughs> it just looks so nice. It's the same as like I'll have Clark Moody's dashboard up and a few other bits and pieces, and I'm like, "Oh, yeah!" It just excites me, even though uh, half the stuff goes over the top of my head. <laughs> No, but but that's at least something to admire, and then you put maybe a here and there some time into it, so that's that's good. <laughs> Is there any sort of things that we sort of said the things that are coming down the line with the Raspberry Blitz project, but is there anything that you're working on personally or excited about in the broader Bitcoin space? Um, it's a little bit the, the, the Raspberry Blitz for community kind of part um, the, about the lightning vouchers and the cash in the back um, uh, concept. It's a little bit lower. It's a, it's 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 the part where I where I want to want to see or wanted to experiment to to see how far we can really make use of the recipe uh, blitz that you run at your home and normally use for yourself or maybe share with your friends and family how you can really maybe use it as a tool uh, to make some change in your in, in your neighborhood like in your local community and um, the for example the lightning vouchers like i can just remember how great it was how easy it was to give people a bitcoin paper wallet so to 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 just give them the first kind of bitcoin on maybe not bitcoin but, but part of a bitcoin 
and just I think we we need something similar and uh, so that we can give easy Satoshis out. And we already have LN URL, and so the idea is now to really run the Raspberry Blitz behind Tor so that you can run it really anon to the outside, but then you can really give away Satoshis uh, to people that then with a voucher, then, then they can experiment with themselves. So this is definitely something I'm excited about, and this is part of the LN Bits project where try to connect a little bit more with Ben now to maybe even jump a little bit more in, also into that and maybe contribute a little bit there to work on the little details. And uh, and also then the on the other side, because this is the one is to giving Satoshis away for people to try stuff out. And the other part is like making it very, very easy for, for merchants to accept Bitcoin. And that maybe even with the kind of cash in the back thing where you just kind of uh, give them a back with some cash in there and say, here's even there's a little QR code in there. If somebody comes in here and wants to pay with Bitcoin, just scan this and you have a temporary POS system and just take out the money after the, after the process. So to have very easy onboarding solutions uh, and, and, and then really see them in action. This is something I'm, I'm very excited about and think we're getting closer there. And I hope we can do on the next rest people. It's kind of hackathon thing mid mid October. We can kind of get the kind of first prepare the kind of first uh, onboarding of, of people and, and and maybe lighting uh, voucher action and then maybe have it prepared to end of the year and maybe to try it in a little bit bigger kind of scale like or maybe some really some neighborhood widespread to see how the reactions are from people and see what kind of feedback we can trigger by normal people and confronting them with this with, with this crazy bitcoin thing i'd love to get involved in that when you're a little bit closer down the line because I, I think these sort of projects are so important. It's all well and good sort of talking about how sound this money is and, and going into the, the sort of technical details of things. But at the end of the day, we need to get normal people involved and spark their interest. And I actually had a conversation last night with 21 is enough. You were talking about the Lightning ATM. And it's these yeah. sort of projects that I get really excited about because I think for people who haven't got involved with Bitcoin before, these are the things that excite them. These are the things where it brings it into the physical world and where it sparks their interest and they're going to dig a little bit deeper. Definitely. I can, can can see because a lot of people have the memory from giving out Bitcoin paper wallets and then they gave it to somebody and those people were kind of, I, I lost it. No, now it's 100. <laughs> uh, 100. But where is it? I don't know. Do, do you have a copy? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so so yeah sure this is all the scenarios were back there but even this gives those people a relation to bitcoin and not just something they just read on the news and say yeah it's some crazy thing those wall street people do so yeah it's it's it's, it's really it, it makes it real so and then it, this is really and it, it, it gives us the possibility to learn early what where are still the pain points and where's maybe something still to be fixed and to be improved uh really by confronting and, and giving this in, in this in this local community we have around us um i think this is the best way then to learn well like i say uh, a little bit closer down the line if you let me know i'd love to get involved with that mm -hmm. so we're uh, we're coming sure. up to about an hour now and i feel like i know a lot more about the raspberry blitz and you've really twisted my arm now i'm going to set one up but is there anything uh, <laughs> is there anything that we haven't covered that you'd like to or yeah anything you wanted to go through or anyone you want to hear from and and if so then let them know where to find you and, and where to reach out uh, so if, if somebody out there wants to wants to got, got interested now, there is the raspyblitz.org, uh, raspyblitz.org, <laughs> okay. uh, where, where I just have a simple, very ugly site, but it kind of gives you the, quickly the basic links. There's a video even with a deep dive uh, you, can, you can watch to maybe just get a really a technical overview of how to set it up and what's the basic stuff there and what does it really offer for you and what you can do with it in the end. Um, and then directly there is a link to the GitHub and uh, on the GitHub you will find kind of everything you, you need to know like the shopping list and, and, and to download or for the SD card image or even the build script if you want to build the SD card yourself. So there's uh, this, I think this is a good starting point, definitely the raspberryblitz.org or just search for raspberryblitz on, on, on Google or your website or search engine of, of choice and it should find it very quickly and um yeah and then you're very welcome to try it out all right well rootsel thank you so much for joining us today it's been an absolute pleasure speaking to you and learning more about the project 
And uh, if you find yourself in London, give us a shout and we'll go for a beer. And if I find myself in Germany, I'll do the same. Yeah, sure. If you're around in Berlin, let me know. <laughs> Thanks so much and speak again soon. Bye bye. Rootsoul, welcome to 21ism. Thank you so much for joining us. And for anyone who doesn't know about what you're working on, can you please just do a little bit of an introduction? Yeah, sure. Um, um, I think most people know me from the Raspberry Blitz project, which is a running a Bitcoin and Lightning node on a Raspberry Pi and a do-it-yourself project and um, sprung into a lot of other additional apps you can now add to this to this node. So it's running your own Bitcoin node is one of the main projects I'm involved. But, it's done, but it started from the FULMO Lightning hack days and even the Lightning conference. Uh, that's where I'm involved in organizing mostly the hack table or or the technical kind of parts. So um, I think this is the kind of most area I'm around and, and visible in the Bitcoin area. And what was it that first grabbed your attention and brought you into Bitcoin? You can say price rise if you like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, 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 um, it, it was the really the concept about the uh, money without banks. So it started after my studies, like I was seeing like this, uh, I have to work for money now. And uh, what is this money? And so I had this interest about money. So and then you were seeing like well, what's going on with with all the uh, 2008 crash uh, and it was like, yeah, there needs to be something better. And because I was just kind of sensitive uh, from that kind of perspective, this is where Bitcoin grabbed my attention. Um, I think it took some time before I had time to really jump in because sure there's private life and stuff so uh, but then I had this moment and and I jumped in with a hackathon just kind of taking the weekend just trying to stuff out build something a small idea about donations and this is where it really grabbed my attention about this all those um, just this money system this payment system also this is why maybe 
was going a little bit more into the lightning direction later on is the is, is, is fascinated me and the thing uh, having this in a decentralized way and changing the system a bit with this uh it's very powerful and what was that experience like falling down the rabbit hole did you feel lonely when you were doing it or did you have enough people around you who were on a similar path we were we quite good connected so i started with this this hackathon uh and kind of very quickly connected to the uh, berlin bitcoin scene the people that were active at this time and most people are still so it was was great because uh, were a lot of on the one side there were a lot of like-minded people because there was this there was the same interest a little bit like just hacker culture background for a lot of people uh, or at least technically interested and on the other side it was this diversity of people that that really uh it never it never got got boring yeah so so let's talk this way and and then so no it was a great journey it was connected with people and uh, after this i kind of stuck to the uh, kind of berlin bitcoin meetup scene even that i had my my short kind of departure or detour into the dogecoin world what was more <laughs> more like a protective kind of uh, measurement uh, because at one point i was there in uh, one of those big events at texas bitcoin and um, that was great on the one side but on the other side it, uh, you really could see all this um the people that just wanted to make business with bitcoin and didn't see the, the we, i think they liked the underlying flavor they were seeing but you would already see like people just oh this is great this is a hype where can where can get my finger in here and then those people that care more about the scam than about the, the other stuff so you, you could at least see those people or at least feel those people around and this is where i was then hiding a bit in the dogecoin world what which is was also not perfect when protecting me against scams so yeah so <laughs> made my lesson and now fascinated by lightning <laughs> <laughs> and outside of dogecoin any other bitcoin horror stories from either you or your friends that you can share with us like real life boating accidents oh yeah there was um there's this great feature on the trezor where you can uh, set an extra password so i don't know if everybody knows it there's uh, you've norm normally you set up your trezor you get your words to recover uh, but then you can add an extra password that uh, with every password you put in it kind of puts you on to new wallet pass and and if you don't have this password you don't have access to those funds anymore and <laughs> oh no it was like i was i have all the words here so <laughs> but what was this what what, what which, which which one was this password <laughs> i wanted to be too secure here so <laughs> No. Because I liked it, I liked it very much because it has this feature. Because it's so it's so nice, you can uh, if if somebody robs you, you can put in another password and have some small Bitcoin there uh, mm -hmm. amount or something, and say, "Look, this is what everything I have. Please take it from me, sir." And 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 uh, <laughs> and then you have the other stuff safe under the other password. I, I like that idea, but um, but really make sure to remember the password. <laughs> <laughs> Good tip. That's a great tip. <laughs> oh. yeah. take, take something maybe that you're very used to and not try to be too smart <laughs> yeah <laughs> and so once you've gone through the horror stories and you got out of doge and all of this stuff and you, and you really went down the bitcoin rabbit hole what was it that got you involved in the raspberry blitz project it, it's a fantastic project i love what you guys are doing and like i said to you before i'm yet to set one up but it looks so cool and everyone raves about it how, how did it come about um it really developed from um our our decision to to do the hack days uh so the lightning hack days and the, the decision to learn together with the community what this lightning can do and um when we planned the first event the last the first uh, hack day in berlin germany we were saying come on we need first of all people should bring notes and so that we can see what does it take to run a note do you need a big computer can you do it in a smaller thing and also there is this recipe blitz tutorial the recipe bolt from staticus um that's already a lot of people were starting to building uh, nodes on recipe pies so we're like come on let's buy some recipe pies and um and then just try to do the tutorial there and see how far we get and then on on the first hack day it was nice because a lot of people had interest and then we, we started to do this and and we're not even finished finishing syncing the blockchain after the second day so so at least we were starting copying stuff and then we're seeing oh this is usb2 this is a a small, uh, so all the stuff looks like 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 eating our time to to get this this finished. So I think that the the tutorial was great, or is still great from from Staticus if you really want to do it step by step. But there 
was the idea to make it maybe a little bit more convenient or more easier to set up a node on a Raspberry Pi. And this is then where we kind of just put the, um, the, the tutorial, the, the little lines into, into scripts. And so this, this is why this whole project is built on, on Bash script, most of, most of the scripts. Um, so, uh, and this kind of developed from there. And uh, at one point I was seeing this problem with people setting it up, what is my IP? And we really, you know, it was like, okay, now I have to look it up here. And we didn't. So, and we were just going, why not a screen? And I was seeing this little nice screen on Amazon and was saying, Let's try this out. It doesn't look this hard. And uh, yeah, and so step by step it developed from there. So this is the original origin story how how why we started it to make it easier for us to um to have those on the hack days and then make it easy for people to add their projects to it so that we can play them with them with it and uh, just everybody can bring it to the events or exchange on it online about it and we have this if you run it yourself, you you have a better understanding. And that was the kind of basic idea behind it. That sounds amazing. And uh, this is why 21ism has chosen you as our dev. You are the first dev that we've had on here. Mm. And we love <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, we love what you're doing. And what I thought for this interview was me, I'm not massively technical. I try my best, but, you know, really, I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. So I have Bitcoin Q&A joining us on this interview to make me sound a little bit better, make me sound like I know what I'm talking about and ask some questions to to dig a little bit deeper into the technicals. So Bitcoin Q&A, can you take over and ask the next question, please? Absolutely, yeah. I'm not going to get too technical too quickly. First question for you, Ruth Sol, is what advice would you give to somebody who doesn't currently run a node that is looking to start taking that next step? What would the first piece of advice to give to them? Mm -hmm. the, I think the, the first advice, or at least question this person should ask, is what kind of person I am uh, and how much time do I have to, to, to spend on it. Uh, maybe this changes afterwards, but if you're more coming from this consumer kind of uh, perspective, so if you're more a Peter McCormick kind of guy, um, then, then, then maybe really start with something that, that really tries to pick you up very, very on your, on your level. Like, like I think the, the umbrella now with the U, uh, web UI is doing a great job there and uh, re reducing, hiding all the complexity from you just try to make it very simple um and or the, the my note is even i think also reaching this goal quite good uh, because it picks you up with a web browser and and really tries to hide the kind of complexity behind the cute qi uh, which is great because uh, such node projects are needed and think for if you're more like that kind of person maybe really start with such a project but if you really know maybe from yourself even if you're maybe not a programmer but you're a person that really likes to tinker and and then get a little bit uh, likes to have the possibility to quickly get under the hood of something uh, and then there then then maybe the recipe blitz is, is a project for you to choose so this is a kind of when you're coming from a do-it-yourself culture definitely check out the recipe blitz so it's um so this is the kind of maybe first question people ask which which direction because you have to choose a project the thing this is maybe the first question that people ask themselves and then also ask yourself a bit like like what is maybe your goal uh, maybe even that's changing in in the end but but um but if it's really just to run it if you want to become a good routing node in the network that's something different than just running your own bitcoin node maybe a small lightning node for yourself and uh, an electrum server to to um to have more privacy on your hardware wallet transactions so there is a little bit different kind of journeys you can you can take but sure you can also jump between them most of the projects try to give you a big variety there yeah, I think uh, I think that's great advice. Like you say, there's uh, quite a lot of things to consider before uh, taking the plunge in there and and diving into the whole node uh, space. So so let's say somebody's at, they've asked themselves them questions. They decided to go for the blitz. They're a bit of a tinkerer, or you know they just want to get stuck in. What what are the common pitfalls that people would make that you see from the support groups that they generally tend to make when when they're getting set up with the blitz? Mm -hmm. So the the basic two ones are um, kind of stable power 
and uh, kind of data stability. Um, so this is why the first kind of lesson is um, even even that the Raspberry Blitz invites you as a do-it-yourself project to build it from parts. We really recommend that you try to stick as close to the chopping list that we have online um, on, on, and kind of when all the single parts are very important to have a stable power supply and also to have the uh, hard drive uh, SSD close to that model that we recommend because even for even if you go into the same SSD uh, but take it a, a bigger one, it could it could mean that it takes more power and maybe then uh, kind of makes it unstable from the power kind of side. So those those are having reliable hardware and have the hardware very close to what we recommend is something. I think it's the kind of first pitfall you can fall into, especially on if you just choose your old power supply that you have lying around and then just plug it into into those setup of the Raspberry Blitz. Um, then this maybe the second part then to look into is to um, make sure that you have your backup credentials right and at least in a good secure way. So for for sure, uh, make sure to to keep keep your uh, written down words in a safe place. And the other thing that you need is the static channel backup file um, that's normally already saved on the SD card and the, and the hard drive by default, but also have a better backup to have um, the last version makes it possible to connect the additional small USB thumb drive to it and have it, uh, have it uh, storing there again, the file but also have a have storing it outside your location like like with a remote place like on Dropbox uh, it's definitely recommended even if Dropbox doesn't sound like the most trustworthy place um the the, the script is uh, the the file is encrypted with your seed words so as long as you don't store your seed words on the Dropbox it's it's safe to use and the benefit that you get is even if you're complete if you, say your your your, your place gets flooded or burned down if you have the seed words and the static channel back up uh, in, 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 in a remote location, then you can you have very good chances to, to recover your funds. Yeah, great advice, especially around the, the whole hardware piece. Uh, I've certainly uh, come a cropper with some various USB 2 and 3 uh, issues with Raspberry Pi 4. So yeah, great advice. What, uh, since you first started working on, on the Raspberry Blitz project, what's been the hardest add-on to get up and running? Um, I think the we had this phase when the Raspberry Pi 4 came out. Uh, we had a lot of experimentation how to get this stable because it was very it, it was getting very hot in the uh, and so we, we we then started to to go with a with a fan to cool it. Uh, and then made the experience that uh, having a moving part in that setup is 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 a journey you really want to choose uh, because uh, this is a mechanical thing that spins uh, can really make problems like getting loud and just getting annoying uh, or uh, we even have sometimes just drop that uh, uh, because there was uh, was had one Raspberry Pi uh, Raspberry Blitz I was was maintaining and it was finding a dead fly in there, so so there is really stuff that can happen and and all this or even even the the dust situation then gets gets can get problematic, so um, figuring that out getting away from this 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 moving fan again um, especially because the it, it it even made strange problems we we were kind of try to figure out why and, and thanks to open arms this is uh he really figured out a lot there um so so we get rid of the the fan again so i think this journey was at least from the hardware kind of situation something that took us some time to get right and i think at the moment we're quite happy with the heatsink case that we have this was on the hardware side on the software side it's um it's really like really now seeing that we have a lot of moving parts because again the Raspberry Blitz tries to be a very open community based project so people are very very happy that people contribute to the project but then of course you have a lot of moving pieces and, and just to try to get keep them together at least as a constant uh, kind of journey we're on um, but I think at least we, we try our best there but really getting used to having all those different setups that's definitely something uh, that uh, took a lot of time to really get used to it and, and think, I hope we reached a quite good good level there. Yeah, I think uh, w when you've got a, a node implementation that's as feature-packed as, as Raspberry Blitz, I'm sure there's uh, every single add-on causes uh, many, many headaches there. So uh, yeah, kudos to you and the team for uh, 
keeping it all so locked down and uh, and working so well together. Uh, last one for me, uh, Ruth Sol, would be if you could wave a magic wand and sort of steal a, a, another uh, feature from another Node implementation or, or come up with a completely new one and just get it implemented mm-hmm. in, into Raspberry Blitz, what would that be? Um, I think definitely the web UI. So um, because um, we had this in mind for a longer time because people are used to use the browser. And again, like I was telling, like the people that coming a little bit more from the consumer perspective, they want to have something neat and a little bit complex complexity uh, hidden. But this wasn't felt, this didn't felt right in the past because we want to have this openness and when we, people have with SSH, that was great, and then give, gives us all gives, gives uh, you all the all the other possibilities to tinker. Um, but having a web UI is definitely something uh, I would like to have a magic wand and just make boom, and it's on there. And this is why I looked a little bit closer to at the Umbrel project uh, that really seems to make a very very great job and having coming from this kind of design first perspective and uh, this is something maybe not impossible to to take parts of of the this ui of the dashboard kind of world maybe we have to to redo uh, something on the back end side but this looks at least interesting so if i can make a friendly wish uh, i wish the umbrel programmers would be very happy even if the raspberry blitz would have some parts of this and maybe get contributes back in the future let's see we'll have to Take, take, to see there if this is uh, something that people like and also the programmer team likes. Yeah, for sure. I think uh, yeah, the web UI will probably be a, a big selling point for particularly for like you say those users that are not perhaps not so technical, uh, especially now that you know the world's going increasingly uh, mobile. I think uh, if if that web UI is accessible on people's mobile phones as well, it probably uh, make things a lot easier for, mm-hmm. for people wanting to get on board and, and run a node. So yeah, that, that's been great, uh, Rutsal. Thank you very much. I'll, uh, I'll hand it back over to Max now. Thanks for asking those uh, more technical questions. And now back to the basic questions from me. <laughs> I'm going to have to put you uh, put you on the spot a little bit here, Rutsal, because we're trying to sure. keep these interviews shorter than what I'm used to. Yeah. So I'm going to do a bit of rapid fire for you here and put you on the spot. All right, let's go. What's the most contrarian view you hold? Um, that I think that um, next to Bitcoin, there will be local commu- uh, currencies uh, and a kind of social money that maybe even work in extremely more with inflation, but can, can, but, but can make something real like a, a universal basic income or something. Because a lot of people just think uh, there is this just this one world without money and it will rain all and will, it will swipe away all the other stuff uh, but I think there it opened up the opportunity for uh, for having other money experiments and we will see those and do you think these things will all be digital you think most of them I think that's that's something once people get used to digital money especially like having Bitcoin as a uh, also as an option I think it doesn't makes sense it, it makes sense you can be so much flexible now with with digital tools and apps and think this is something we will see more yeah. and what if anything do you see could possibly destroy bitcoin it's maybe again the um the the now the wall street kind of creeping in a little bit more and people and those guys are used to take control of what they kind of own or at least think they own and the uh, and we will see some attempts there, and we have to watch out that the economical. There's a good article from from Staticurs, like uh, running a full note is important, and we need to run economical uh, full notes that have some economical power. And the good message is there a lot of smaller nodes together can can sum up at least against the bigger slack like coinbase uh, running nodes and, and and amazon running nodes and google running nodes and uh, apple running nodes whatever we have in the future there um so uh yeah that's something to look out for and this is why i think a lot of people like also to train and to do running a node excellent advice yeah uh, completely agree Everyone who's listening, let's uh, run a node, get a Raspberry Blitz running, and keep these dirty weasels out and from <laughs> trying to control Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah. and, 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 but, but just, just to, to let you, uh, everybody know, it's not that important that you run a node every time. So Because that's something really to run, run something from your home is not for everybody. But to be able to understand what it takes to run your own node, though, so when the time comes that you're maybe possible to do this, and maybe then provide a little bit, uh, this is def- the training is very important. If you could speak to Satoshi, I gave you one hour, 
in a pub, just you and him, a <laughs> couple of pints, <laughs> share a packet of crisps. What would you say to him? Well, first of all, of course, thank you. So uh, this is uh, such a selfless act uh, that we're seeing, uh, the, the donating something, uh, and, and even then not touching those Satoshi coins that are on there. <laughs> so it's uh, very, very, th thank you for that. So um, the, the, the more details, maybe I would I would be very interested in his view on the uh, energy consumption question because I think a lot of Bitcoiners very easily weasel out of there. Um, and it was one of the first questions even Hal Finney was asking, like, uh, oh, we have to talk about this uh, energy consumption thing and how it maybe can have to do with the CO2 problem and maybe add to it. And uh, I know there's a lot of, I like discussing this at least. And from Satoshi, I would like to hear if, if he had in mind what we were seeing now with the, with the mining industry. Interesting. Yeah, it's a, it's a big question that comes up a lot. To my mind, I think it's been answered and I think it's been answered pretty well, but it's a complex rabbit hole and um i'm not sure i fully understand it and uh yeah it'd be fascinating to hear what he had to say about that good question if i'm ever <laughs> if i ever find myself in a pub with him i'm going to be stealing that one from you what's your top five books you've ever read um there's a from the top of my mind, there is uh, some good books from Eric Fromm or um, some good Harari thing books. That are, that I really like those. Uh, there's a lot of stuff there. Good uh, science fiction, uh, Lem Asimov, of course. Uh, maybe one one in particular I really liked was the KLF the menu. I don't know if you if you know it. It's about the the the, no. the, the, the guys that did the KLF and they wrote a book like the menu, how to do a number one hit. So it's really a menu you can follow. And I really like the spirit in there. It's like no respect for the industry and just get going and do it. It's like it's like like, like <laughs> cyberpunks write code. It's like like music punks write music. Like it's so we really, really like the attitude there. So uh, KLF very interesting band. So uh, they're definitely a good good book and yeah and at the moment i try to to have this um depth the first five thousand years on my table are uh, from david graeber i uh, didn't know no he knew, knew him before but i think he died recently and came up in my timeline and a lot of people i respect recommended the, his books so definitely something to to read on now okay great i'll check that one out how if at all has bitcoin changed you mm, that's good uh i think on a on a social level, it was a very interesting journey because, um, as you can 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 see, I'm kind of uh, with all these events we're doing and and the meetups. I kind of even I'm a normally a little bit more uh, kind of a nerdy person, not too, not too much, but at least uh, also like to be a lot by myself and so a lot. So um, meeting all those different people was is really interesting. I think it changed a lot in my perspective to have a broader view. And also on the tolerance level, it added a lot uh, to at least to be to be able to handle some views that I was very strange maybe to me before. So this is definitely a journey um, that's that you can learn a lot from the Bitcoin scene to uh, to <laughs> even if it doesn't seem to in the beginning, maybe. Uh, but but there's a lot of diversity there uh, in, in different mindsets and why people are there and, and what they're thinking about the world. And that's very interesting. And I think it definitely let there's some imprint there. Yeah, it is amazing. Uh, I think whether people like to admit it or not, it does change all of us to some degree. And it's it's such a powerful force when you really get involved with it and uh, I, I think it really flips your mind on a lot of issues and I think that's amazing you know people say Bitcoin will change you more than you change it and I, I completely agree yeah, definitely it's a journey <laughs> yeah for sure all right we're coming up to time now it's been amazing talking to you I love what you're doing and it's great to have you as our first dev so thank you for taking the time to speak to me and to Bitcoin Q&A but before we close out mm -hmm. I would like to finish on you giving me your best one minute elevator pitch. Oh, okay. Um, in the end, it's like everybody knows, uh, not your keys, not your Bitcoin. Uh, but I really like to add to this, uh, not your note, not your rules. So yeah, this this is uh, something to think about, uh, maybe to expand a little bit this, this pitch line. Brilliant. All right. Thank you so much for joining me. As I say, it's been an absolute pleasure. And uh, I'll be reaching out to you in the background once I try and set up my Raspberry and uh, 
it all goes wrong. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> we'll be speaking again soon. Uh, any final words from you, Bitcoin Q&A? Uh, no, well, I'd just like to say to Ruth, so on behalf of myself and probably the rest of the community, just, just a big thank you. You know, I've got huge respect for everybody that's uh, in the trenches building stuff to push this whole space forward. So, yeah, just a big thank you to Rootsol and uh, you keep doing what you do. It, it is appreciated. Thanks. <laughs> Any final words, Rootsol? I'm, I'm quite good, um, but maybe if you, if, you, if, you, if you want to check out the, the RespiBlitz project, the uh, RespiBlitz.org, uh, or just search RespiBlitz uh, on, on, on the search engine, and uh, you should find it on the GitHub page. And enjoy the journey from there. Amazing. Thanks for everything you do, and we'll speak again soon. All right. Bye-bye.